on this episode of This Is Game Boy Light, speaking about bad religion. Hello everybody, welcome back to another fresh episode of This Is Game Boy Light, our little in-between episodes where only one of us um, is actually talking, this time it being me, hello everybody. Um, so yeah, um, it's, it's time for a little shorter episode again, and um, I'll be diving into what it's about in a little bit, but I guess I'll first uh, go over what I've I have been doing since uh, since our last recording, which was a big one. Uh, I hope everybody enjoyed that episode. Like um, we mentioned it on a few channels that we were not expecting to go on for three and a half hours, um, but we had so much to talk about. We also had our guest Gran and Hero on, um, and yeah, we just kept going and going, and uh, yeah, <laughs> before we knew it, it was almost midnight my time. Uh, it, it was a little crazy, um, and we decided not to split up the episode in the end because it wasn't made like a, like a double episode, like a Spider-Man one, for example, which had like a good uh, cutoff. Um, so we decided, you know what, let's just uh, put the whole thing out there so, um, so it doesn't uh, feel weird if we split it up anyways. Um, so yeah, I hope everybody enjoyed that one. I think um, it showed that we had a lot to talk about, um, that we are uh, definitely passionate about, uh, not only, of course, Link's Awakening, uh, but just uh, talking about these Game Boy, or in that case, a Switch uh, video game in general. Uh, but yeah, since then, I, of course, have been uh, continuing with my portable pleasure uh, Game Boy System challenge. Um, so I've done, I've done a few games. I've done uh, quite a few of them, actually. Um, first, I played through Aerostar. I don't think I mentioned this one last last time, um, which is a shmup. If you want to hear more about that, I talked a little bit more about it in my uh, shmup light. Um, not that much because I hadn't played it then, but uh, it's a very interesting one. It's like, it's a shmup, but you're tied to the ground and, and you can only move on certain pathways and you can like jump um, to avoid obstacles or to like, um, if there is a gap that you need to cross, you can jump over that. So um, I would highly recommend that game. It's really cool. And there's three difficulties. So if you have a, having some troubles on normal difficulty, you can always go for the easy setting. Or if you want a more of a challenge, go for hard. I would not recommend that one though. Um, after that, I played Cool World based on the movie from 1995, I believe, which was not a great movie. And the game isn't great either. Um, it's, yeah, it's, it's just not good. I would not recommend anyone playing it. Um, I feel like I have talked about this game before. I don't know. Uh, maybe I'm going through it again. Whatever then. Uh, but yeah, I would not recommend it. I would uh, just move on. Um, after that, our lovely producer Lex picked a game for me called Go Go Tank. Um, I had never heard of it, so I, I had no idea what was going on. Um, it's hard to explain what it is. Um, it's basically a puzzle game where you control a plane. Yes, you control a plane. You're not controlling a tank, but you're trying to guide a tank through a level and you have to make like bridges and stairs and things like that for the tank to go over until it reaches the end. Um, it's a very original game. Um, it has amazing music. It has really, really cute graphics. Gra graphics, yes, uh, graphics. Um, which, uh, like, if you look at the cover for the for the American version, um, it does not look cutesy at all. Um, but it really is. Um, if you played Banishing Racer, I would. Um, compare it with that graphics wise but a little better maybe um, but it's very cute it's like the tank has has eyes and then the plane has eyes so it's very cutesy um, it has 10 levels I believe something like that like it was over before I knew it um, even though I had some trouble at the start because uh, there, there's unlimited uh, no unlimited continues my apologies um, so if you game over three times you basically have to restart the entire game because there's no passwords either but um, 
yeah, once you get into it, um, it goes by pretty fast. The only problem with that game is that uh, controlling the airplane feels like actually controlling an airplane. So it's, yeah, it's it's quite hard. It's quite hard, actually. So, um, yeah, um, I would say don't give up, though. Uh, keep on playing. Um, you might really enjoy this game. Um, after that, I played a Japanese-only game called uh, Karakuri Kengu Den Musashi Lord, based on uh, some kind of anime I've never seen before. Um, it's uh, it's nothing special. It's like a uh, top-down, um, I would say Zelda-like game, but without like dungeons and and, and and different items you can get. Um, it's hard to explain, I guess. Um, you basically start on an overworld when you, then you head into a town and there you have to like find four houses by solving some, yeah, solving some environmental puzzles, I guess I can call it. Um, and then you move on to a boss and there's like seven stages or, or eight stages or something like that a pretty easy game it has passwords uh which are big passwords so if you're not really good at that like the kanji it's kind of hard to uh to like put them in um i game over it once i just restarted the entire game because i didn't yeah, understand that the i password. went into uh, bugs um, bunny's crazy castle but or the that, bugs bunny fun. crazy castle however you want to call it um, that's a game I had since I was a kid. I don't think I've ever beaten it as a kid, but I did play it a lot, and now I actually went through it. It's uh, yeah, it's it's simple enough. Up there's 80 stages up until stage 70. It's it's actually very easy to get through everything, but after that the um, the maps get a little bigger, and you can't keep track of where all the enemies are, and it requires some uh, good luck, good RNG to get through them. So that wasn't really fun. Like, I didn't game over up until, like, stage 73 or 74, um, so I had plenty of lives, but I lost them all, like, in, in one or two levels, and uh, then I had to put in the password to continue, or you can just continue, whatever. Um, it doesn't really matter if you have lives or not. They could have easily just given you unlimited lives. So it wouldn't really matter. But I think it's a fun game. Um, but it's definitely nothing special. It has some fun music. But some of the music gets very repetitive after a while. Uh, the graphics are alright. And depending on which version you play. You either play as Bugs Bunny or you play as Mickey Mouse. Because of licensing issues and things like that. I think everybody knows the story of... Uh, of the Crazy Castle series, and if not, um, it's it's all just licensing. The, it's all the same game, but with different characters. Like for that one, you have Mickey Mouse and Bugs Bunny. For the second one, you have Bugs Bunny, Hugo in Germany, uh, Woody Woodpecker, uh, and Mickey Mouse, I believe. So it, it's quite a mess, but it's basically just the same game. Um, after that, I went into Kirby's Blog Ball. Um, was uh, really happy that somebody picked that for me. Another game I had since I was a kid and was never able to fully beat. Um, if you have never played Kirby's Block Ball before, it's uh, like an Arkanoid clone thing. Um, but you, have, of course, have boss fights and things like that. But you can only access the final stage if you've beaten the uh, minimum required score, which is called a borderline in that game. And you get a flag, and if you get 10 flags you can finally access the the ddd stage um so i was never able to do that when i was a kid um i really had trouble a lot of trouble getting uh getting their required scores in some of the stages um and to my surprise this went really really well for me i think it took me like three hours and 50 minutes or something to get through it um only had to repeat uh, world 4 a few times to get the high score and world 9 two times I think um, so it is easier than I remembered it but um, you really need to know what you're doing um, make some make some decisions before you enter a level get like a maybe a power it's not always needed but maybe get a power up that can help you out a lot um, but stage 9 is definitely in my opinion the hardest borderline to get even though it took only took me two times but that stage doesn't provide you a lot of options to get a lot of points so you're gonna have to like basically do a perfect run of that stage to get it but yeah definitely check it out i, I absolutely love that game like mm, 
basically all Kirby games. Um, like, I even love Pinball Land, which is a complete mess, of course, but I do love it. Um, so, yeah, there you go. Um, and besides that, I also play Jurassic Park, the, the original one. Um, I love or Jurassic Park Part 2, Chaos Continues on Game Boy a lot. Um, that one is more of a standard platformer game uh, with a lot of, sadly, with a lot of auto-scrollers. Um, but Jurassic Park 1 is a top-down game. Um, I really like it. Uh, I think the music is great. I think the graphics are great. The only problem I have with it is um, there are basically, quote-unquote, two boss fights. One when there's a stampede of triceratops that you have to avoid and the hitboxes are... Uh, quite dumb plus you're also trying to guide another person you have to save and sometimes they don't respond and if they get hit you get hit um, and the second fight is uh, the same basically you you also have somebody with you that you have to guide but the t-rex is coming after you um, and the way to you can't beat the t-rex you have to like push him back which is fine if you have weapons from the uh, stage before but the problem is if you game over and you continue from that stage you have lost all your weapons and um, when I was playing it I couldn't figure out how to actually push him back anymore um, because the game taught me that I had to use weapons but apparently and I guess this is a spoiler uh, if you want to figure it out just skip one minute or, or 30 seconds in this episode but the way to do it is to just stand perfectly still and he will just back off so yeah those were two stages I, I didn't really like um, that's pretty much it for Game Boy there is one other Game Boy thing I played but I'm not gonna be talking about that uh, right now because I am actually gonna do an episode on uh, that other game uh, so that that's something for the future i i'm not gonna spoil uh, whatever it is but maybe people saw me play it i don't know um but then you know what what it is at least um and besides that uh no game boy games i was still playing metal gear solid 5 i am still playing metal gear solid 5 finally made it through all the uh story i guess uh, for the game, but I still have a lot of cleaning up to do to get that uh, platinum trophy. So that's gonna take me like another 30, 40 hours probably. Um, but yeah, it took me like 95 hours to get through the, the normal story. I did a lot of side missions, of course, so I didn't concentrate on the story alone. Um, speaking of that, me and Baltic might have something planned in the future for Metal Gear, like if, if uh, some of the listeners like that series a lot. Um, we, we have some plans in the future. Nothing set in stone yet, but we do want to do something around the Metal Gear uh, series in the future. Um, not a podcast or anything like that. <laughs> this is the only podcast we'll do, probably. Uh, but yeah, we'll see. We'll see. Um, it's It could be exciting. So, yeah. But that's, that's definitely future talk. Um, I also finished Pokemon Sword. Main story, at least. Um, now I'm just trying to catch all the Pokemon. I have 302 out of 400 right now. I just occasionally play it. I, I'm not like grinding it or anything, but uh, yeah, it's it's still fun. Um, it's still very easy. Um, yeah, I hope I can get that uh, that full Pokédex for sure uh, before the end of the year would be cool. Otherwise whatever um and then i started catherine um can't really say much about that yet it's a puzzle game uh with animu story uh so yeah i mean besides it, everybody knows that game so um i just got into it um i played it on easy because i really not good at puzzles uh so i can actually uh, enjoy the story of that game but yeah, again, maybe I'll talk a little bit more about that in the future when I actually finish the game. But yeah, that's everything I've been up to. Um, so today's episode is gonna be about uh, a little game called Another Bible, which probably nobody has ever heard of before besides a few people. So um, after this break, after the song from Another Bible, we will be diving into that one. Be right back.
Welcome back everybody. Hope you enjoyed the little music from uh, from another Bible. Uh, has some great music for sure. Sadly, you will be hearing the same tunes a lot in this game. Uh, but yeah, another Bible. What is it? Let's dive into that first before I start uh, diving into the actual game itself and what it is. Um, so, another Bible is a spin-off of a spin-off of one of the um, mainline Megami Tensei games. Um, if you don't know what that is, Megami Tensei has been around for uh, a very long time. Um, it's It was mostly, at least mostly, uh, a Japanese series at the beginning. Um, it's a franchise, it's actually a brand name, and most people nowadays know it as Shin Megami Tensei, which is actually um, just the, the international name of it. Megami Tensei is the uh, Japanese, I'm not even sure if I'm pronouncing it correctly, by the way. Um, so, um, yeah, there have been a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of these games. Um, like, the first one came out in 1987, and... Basically, it's still going on to this day. But the most well-known uh, franchise that come, came out of it will probably be Persona. I think everybody uh, knows that, especially since 5 came out. Um, it's gotten a lot more popular than 4 was also very popular. Uh, but I think, yeah, Persona is the, the one spin-off series of the Megami Tensei franchise that uh, that got the most attention in the West, at least. Um, there's still a lot of these games that have only been released in Japan. And this one is, uh, this one is basically uh, the same. So um, the franchise this falls under is the last Bible one. Um, so, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it's kind of hard to explain because there's so many games, uh, of course, but, um, yeah, uh, Last Bible was a spin-off of the main series when it first came out, um, which includes, um, in total, I think six games. Um, you have the first one, Revelations the Demon Slayer, so that one isn't even called, uh, well, in Japan it's called Last Bible, of course, um, which was a Game Boy game, that was a Game Boy game, but that's not the one we are talking about right now. Um, after that came uh, Megami Tensei Gaiden, uh, Last Bible 2, so in that title you can see it, Megami Tensei Gaiden, Gaiden means side story, so uh, Last Bible 2 also came out on Game Boy, um, we also had Last Bible 3, which came out for the Super Famicom, so only in Japan. And then there was a spin-off of this series called Another Bible. And that one, of course, came out on Game Boy, or, or otherwise I would not be talking about it. Um, the Last Bible series is basically uh, just an RPG. Basically. Um, so... In that series, you can like recruit monsters to your partney, partney, party, uh, a trope that's uh, been used in like literally most of the Megami Tensei games. Um, there's also like the mechanic of, of like the moon, um, which which uh, period of the moon is that what you call stand of the moon? Um, that has always something to do with it. Um, so um, yeah, that was just a normal. Uh, a normal RPG, a normal turn-based RPG, I would say. But another Bible is, uh, because it's a spin-off, it was actually a turn-based strategy game. So that's the one we're talking about today. Um, so yeah, if you like strategy RPGs, you're gonna love this one. I do not like strategy RPGs, to be honest. Um, so why am I actually talking about this game? Well, just so people know about it. Um, I'm not sure if Last Bible 1 and Last Bible 2 got a translation yet, a fan translation, but uh, another Bible surely did, so that's why I was able to play it. Because of course in RPGs, if you if you don't know Japanese and you have to play them like that, you are not getting anywhere. So uh, luckily there is a uh, fan translation of it, 
which you can easily find on the internet if you really want it. So uh, go ahead and check that out if you want the strategy RPG on Game Boy because there aren't that many of them and most of them are Japanese only with no translation. But yeah, this game came out uh, on March 3rd, 1995. Um, it was developed by DICE and published, of course, by Atlas um, because most of the Megami Tensei games get published by Atlas. Um, in the beginning, they didn't, though. Um, I, I'm not sure who it was. I think it was Sega that produced them uh, before. Um, but after a while... Uh, Atlas took over mostly in, in publishing these games. Um, they don't make them, by the way. They just publish them. Um, it's always the Sega team, or at least people f from former Sega that, that work on these games and, and also uh, some other teams. Um, the composer for this game is uh, Manami Matsumai. That's all the information I could find. Um, I'm already glad I found a name, but um, I'm gonna say it's an in-house producer just for maybe more than than uh, just another bible uh, might have done uh, a few more of these uh, Shin Megami Tensei or Megami Tensei games uh, but that's uh, that's basically all I could find about it so uh, what is this game about um, it takes place in the world of Granas and um, in the past there was a great war between humans and demons um, after a long battle a long conflict uh, the peace was restored between these two races um, so they were actually Coexisting for coexisting for quite a while, um, but eventually a demon cult starts appearing, and um, that cult is trying to get the demons to free themselves of the humans because, like, they are not being abused by humans, but they are also well, they are kind of getting used by humans to do like uh, special stuff that that humans would not be able to do. So um, yes, that that cult is uh, trying to bring a riot uh, between the demons and the humans. So. Um, another war basically breaks out. Um, you play as uh, the protagonist called Cassiel. Um, you can name your character whatever you want. Um, I don't think he has a set name at the start. Um, kind of like Secret of Mana where you can uh, just... Well basically name your own character but his actual name is Randy uh, in this game the actual name of the hero is Cassiel. Um, Cassiel lost his parents probably due to uh, the new war starting and he decides to abandon his hometown to yeah just travel basically. Um, after a while at the start of the game um, he runs across a girl called Piutia I think that's how you pronounce it and um, after he rescues her they both uh, travel together and figure out what is going on, why there is a cult, what they are trying to do, and then they are trying to stop it. Um, it kind of goes into a territory where, um, which is very tropey for RPGs, like Putia is actually um, basically an angel um, that needs to protect the earth or, or granas in this case uh, from the evil demons uh, and Cashel is uh, one of her protectors and through the game you meet a lot of different people uh, different uh, angels and, and normal humans that uh, basically have their have their uh, yeah oh, I totally lost my train of thought there uh they all, they all play their own role in the story, um, except for some random characters you meet that are just there to be there. Um, eventually, you, always, uh, you also um, go into basically another world where um, machines live, um, so cyborgs and, and machines, and see that these were old weapons slash... Uh, uh, tools that got made by the uh, by the humans to help them with their life, but they have been long abandoned and things like it. It's a pretty samey story than than any other RPG, really. So don't expect anything uh, super <laughs> super original in it at all. Um, where does the title come from? Um, well, 
it comes from the fact that there is a Bible in this world, so which speaks of how God created uh, the humans and the demons and yada yada yada. And um, the leader of the demon cult is actually trying to reforge that Bible into a new story. And by doing that, it, it basically becomes to life and becomes a threat to the entire existence of uh, the human and the angel race and even the demon race as well because um, it would just destroy everything so that that's where it comes from that's why it's called another bible and that's the basically the name of the final boss that's uh, another bible so it's kind of it's kind of weird uh but yeah going into the gameplay of this game like i said it is a strategy rpg which means you have to uh, move your forces around the field until they come across an enemy uh, or until they come across a chest or something like that and then you can interact with that um the fighting is super simple um you basically can only do a normal attack and some of the characters have uh, magic attacks or special attacks um, of course each character has its own uh, good points and bad points um, just a random example like your hero can move a few steps and can only attack when he's close to enemies um, the girl is basically a healer so she can heal everybody she can use her bow to attack from a distance um, and then there are characters that can move a long long way or that can only move a few uh, steps but are a lot stronger um, it, it's very self-explanatory at least um, there's also uh, terrain that you have to consider like you move slower uh, when you're in a forest zone or when you have to cross water or a swamp or ice things like that but anything else you can just move your normal way um, your characters level up each time they get 100 uh, experience points um, which also completely heals you and refills your mana and you get uh, two skill points that you can set in uh, your different stats um, there are only five of these stats you have uh, your attack power you got your defense power you got your magic power you got luck and you got speed um, besides the the first three um, explain themselves um, speed means only when you can move in comparison to other characters and other enemies on the screen so it's basically something you don't want to invest points in at all um, it doesn't really matter because everybody in the end gets one turn of course per uh, per round um, maybe it's useful if some characters can move a little faster than others but uh, I, I wouldn't worry about it um, luck is a little bit more important but um, it's also still very RNG based. Luck basically um, increases your chances to crit enemies, to do double attacks or to do uh, not parries, but like a counter attack if you get uh, attacked by an enemy. So the higher that stat is, the more of a chance you have to actually do those things, um, which is really useful um, if it would happen, but... Um, Again, I would not recommend putting any points into that from the start. The main thing you want to focus on um, is attack, defense, and magic, depending on which character you are using. Um, speaking of the characters, there are a lot of them in this game. Like, no joke, I, I think there's like uh, normal characters, there's like 15 of them. There are two... well, two maybe more yeah i guess technically two but there are like five hidden ones that you can find uh, the way that works is there are three maps where there's a secret entrance to like a cave or something like that and you can find um you can find a new recruit there that you can take with you um i wouldn't really recommend using the first two but in the end when you're in like the uh the mechanical world there is like a really really good one um that i would recommend trying to find i would also say just look at the the walkthrough online to see where the that hidden thing really is because it will definitely be worth your time um 
after, besides that, besides all the normal characters, you can also basically recruit any monster that you come across. Um, so instead of uh, killing them, you can talk to them and try to convince them to come on your party. Um, I had not done that at all in this game. Like there was absolutely no use and I will <laughs> come to that uh, right now, I guess. Um, out of the 15, I'm going to say 15, out of the 15 characters you can have, the normal ones, that is, there are like five characters that you will actually be using um there is uh, of course the, the the hero and the quote-unquote princess um you are it's mandatory to use them so you cannot uh, you cannot form a team without them except for later story something story-wise happens and and then you then you do have uh, <clears throat> a kind of a choice there um but besides that you come across a few characters that will help you at the beginning because your team is just small but once you have uh, Alta um, and Hera with you um, you basically will only be using those two um, and then the hero then the princess to heal you and then some random character to maybe go um, open up a chest or something like that um, the good thing of course about a strategy rpg is you can totally do it the way you want to of course you can form your own team um, with with the characters that you want but um, yeah th there is really no need to which is kind of kind of sad to be honest because uh, it is a cool game but it doesn't have a lot of depth um, as I said, each 100 experience points you get levels you up and as uh, Hera, the hero and um, Alta will be taking out most enemies, they will be leveling up like crazy and will be maxed out before you know it. Because yes, you can max out your characters. Um, each stat can go up to 40 points. Um, you can only see 30, but you can keep going until 40. Um, but yeah, once you have attack, defense and magic or like one of them that they mainly use, you can pretty much destroy everything um, without even having to uh, get somebody else in the team. And it's also recommended to not make your team that big. I think you can take 10 people with you um, at best for sure, but um, picking less people is better because this is a strategy RPG and it's really, really slow. Um, because you have to not only do your own commands for all the characters you take with you, you also have to wait all the turns for when the enemies start to move. So after a while it, it becomes you just sitting there waiting for everything to happen and then you can uh, start moving again. So that is one of my big complaints, not with maybe this game, but just uh, all strategy RPGs in general. Like, I'm really, really not a fan of these games because it's it's super slow. Um, I'm really not good at them either. Um, but luckily, this one is so easy that you do not need any skill or knowledge about strategy RPGs. Um, but yeah, it, it's just really, really slow. I think the game took me like... Between 8 and 10 hours to finish, um, but yeah, most of that time is just spent waiting, sadly, so uh, yeah, it's it's not something that I enjoy a lot. Um, what else can I say about the game? Um, like I mentioned before, the music is actually really good, but um, it does get overused, like there's not that many actual tracks that get used and because you spend so much time on uh, one map um yeah you you really get tired of it after a while i would say luckily it is good music but it's not it's not like it's super great that you want to uh remember it all the time so um yeah that's a sad part about this but um besides that um i think the graphics of this game are really cool definitely like the fighting scenes um if you attack an enemy you get like a little fighting scene uh which is also always nice to see um the overworld sprites are not that uh fantastic but it works definitely for game boy you know what everything is 
um, once you see it. So that is always useful. Um, besides all of that, um, there are no actual equipment. Um, there are some things that you can buy that uh, that you can equip on your characters that something like a shield or something that replenishes your HP or MP every turn and um, something that makes you travel faster over rough terrain. Um, and one of the best items in my opinion, the angel wings, I think they're called, um, which gives you the ability to fly so you can like really, really go far. Um, so it's easier for you to uh, to get somewhere. Um, how do you win uh, each map? Um, you either have to destroy all the enemies on screen or you just um, have to get the hero and it only works for the hero, you have to get him to the end point. Um, there are maps that have multiple levels, like when you enter a dungeon or you enter a castle that you have to do multiple levels. Then everybody has to move uh, through the stairs up to the next floor, but only the hero can end the stage. So um, that's something to keep in mind that you pretty much want him in front all the time so you're close to the end. But uh, yeah, you, you want to use your fast moving characters to go around the map and get treasures. Um, and you want like... Uh, Alta and Hera to take out enemies. So um, yeah, that's uh, that's actually pretty much all I can say about the gameplay of this game. Again, if you like strategy RPGs, I really think you should uh, give this one a try. Maybe you'll come to the same conclusion that it doesn't have, um, yeah, that it doesn't really have that much depth to it. But I think this is a very Impressive for a Game Boy game at least. So um, yeah, definitely try and check it out for sure. And go with a translation because otherwise you won't uh, you won't even know what's happening. Um, moving on, let's uh, let's dive a little bit into the cover art real quick. Um, it's uh, very animu. Um, when you see it, yeah, like I can't say much uh, more of it. You can see the hero and the princess. Um, you can see a few different characters in the background, uh, one of them being uh, Alta, um, and then the the demon in the background, which is not the another Bible demon, I think it's the main antagonist, and I can't remember his name correctly, but uh, that's him. Um, you also see a few monsters here and there, um, and some mountains in the background, and a moon, yeah. You see, the, like I said before, the moon, um, the phases of the moon are always important in these games. That's maybe something uh, gameplay-wise. Um, in the upper right corner, you always see the face of the moon. And the fuller the moon gets, the stronger the uh, enemies get. And with stronger, it means they will deal much more damage. They are harder to convince to get on your team. And... Um, they dodge your attacks more easily. But um, most of the time, you're really not paying attention to that. Um, the, the, again, the game is not that deep that it uh, really matters. Like, it might come to play even more in the other uh, Megami Tensei games, but certainly not in this one. Um, I also have, like, uh, the, the cartridge art, um, where you have... Um, what was his name again? I forgot the name of the... Cashiel, that's it, the hero, um, and the princess, and then the other first character you get with you. Um, I don't remember his name, but you will get rid of him very shortly after you get um, some some characters that can move a lot faster than him and are just as strong, because he can only do like three steps at a time, and he will always get behind and can't get anything done. So after the break, I will be wrapping up this episode. And welcome back again, everybody. Um, yeah, like I said, I'll be basically wrapping up this episode now. Um, usually we take a break and then talk about uh, our thoughts and histories with the game, but I guess I already said that. But um, just to recap real quick, um, I hadn't played this game before, before um, somebody picked it for me for portable pleasure. I had heard about this game from Bangara, 
Um, he had played it before and actually liked it. Um, so I also knew there was a translation for it. Um, but yeah, I, I played through it. I enjoyed it for the most part, even though it was kind of boring to me. And even though I'm not really a fan of strategy RPGs. But I think it's definitely a game that uh, should get a lot more attention. Uh, especially from people who do love strategy RPG. So um, yeah, definitely go check it out. But yeah, with that, I think I have said everything I needed to say about this game. Um, there's not that much more to it. Um, just try and uh, find out yourself if it's something for you or not. Um, I did not get any listener questions for this game because, again, I don't think that a lot of people know it, so maybe this will change that up a bit. Um, I'm not sure about the pricing for this game. I don't think it's that cheap to begin with. Um, so um, getting a copy might be a little harder and more expensive than it should be. Um, but yeah, if you could find a copy of this, uh, be sure to pick it up. Of course, um, that one is not translated. Um, if I do remember correctly, there are repros out there with the English translation on it. So you might be able to, to get one of those. That's always nice to have. Um, so try to try to look out for that as well um yeah but that's pretty much it for me um like always um, you can find me on the twitter the twitch and the youtube um all slash moolah that's m-o-e-l-l-e-u-h you can find my co-host on uh baltic gaming um on on twitch and on uh, Twitter and on Instagram, but he doesn't post that much, um, as he always says. And yeah, well, on YouTube you can't find him under that yet, but um, it will it, it will have like an actual link to that in the future. Um, and when it comes to our producer Lex, you can find her. And I always forget. Um, it's either sprinting Lex or Lex on on stuff. <laughs> it's always hard to say. I think it's Lex on YouTube. Right, whatever. And she also has her own website, which is just uh, sprintinglex.com, uh, I believe. But because I'm an idiot and I don't know what everybody's linkings are for, for all their social media, you can always just go to our website, of course, which is uh, gbrunners.com com slash t-i-g-b where you can find links to just about everything you need to uh, to get in contact with any of us so that's always the easiest way to go um you can also of course find a link to our patreon on there do you like what we are doing and do you want to support us monthly that is then you can always become a patron and um, then you get access to a few extra things like all of the notes that we write down for these episodes um, some bonus tracks that are that are around um, they get posted to our discord where you get access to a special channel where you you can, uh, can listen to those. And there are also some things we're working on for the future that will be added to Patreon. Um, besides that, do you not want to do like a monthly subscription thing, but still want to support us? Not only just listen to us, of course, that always means a lot. Also, um, like us on uh, SoundCloud or whatever you are listening to. And if you have a chance for it, just rate us, like for uh, example, on iTunes. Um, the more people rate us, the higher we get uh, listed, of course, in the podcast listings. So, uh, make sure to do that um, if you want to let more people know about us. Or you can, of course, post about us on your own social media to spread the word. Um, but do you want to do uh, with, with money? You can also just do a one-time donation or something like that through our PayPal. Uh, there's also a link for that on our website. All right, but besides that, I am completely done for today. Um, in two weeks, there will not be a new full episode. Um, holiday season is just around the corner, so we, we kind of mixed up our schedule for that so we won't have the time to record a full episode which is going to be on Maru's mission um, so I will be doing another light just to fill the gap because I have some more time than Baltic to record um, and as I said I will be um, 
I played one other Game Boy game, which is not an official Game Boy game, but a fan-made game, I guess, or an indie game. Uh, so it's completely new. It just came out like a few weeks ago, and it's called Daddyus, which is a horror game for Game Boy. Um, if you don't want to get spoiled, don't uh, download it yet, I guess, but you can. Uh, you can definitely download it. But I will be talking about Daddyus in... Uh, around two weeks, so hope to see you then for that episode. Later, man. Thanks, Lex.